Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Sarah Wong. Our top stories tonight. There are reports of hundreds of deaths as Russia escalates its offensive against Ukraine. Ukraine's president signals his disappointment at Western sanctions against Russia. And COVID cases in Hong Kong soar above 10,000 for the first time. Hundreds of soldiers and civilians are reported to have been killed as airstrikes battered the Ukrainian capital Kyiv on the second day of a Russia incursion. The invading forces seized the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and are closing in on Kyiv as Moscow tries to demilitarize his neighbor. A sleepless night in the Ukrainian capital as panicked residents fled flames and debris in Europe's largest ground war in decades. Fires erupted as missile strikes rocked central Kyiv, which braced itself for a head-on assault by Russian forces from three sides. The barrage of rocket fire started before sunrise, with a Russian aircraft crashing into a residential block. Another building was set ablaze after it was hit by rocket remnants. Gunfire was heard on the street, with Russian tanks reportedly poised to encircle the capital. Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba blasted the strikes that he said resembled offensives by Nazi Germany in 1941. In a video address, President Vladimir Zelensky appealed directly to Russian leader Vladimir Putin for a ceasefire and talks. He vowed to stay in Kyiv with his people, despite mounting intelligence reports that Putin plans to topple his government. Earlier, Russian troops on their way to Kyiv from Belarus captured the Chernobyl exclusive zone, the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster. Ukrainian forces put up a fierce battle but failed to fend off the Russian advance, and some soldiers were reportedly taken hostage. Zelensky called Russia's offensive an attack against the whole of Europe, as leaked radioactive dust could cloud the entire continent. With hostilities showing no sign of abating, the Ukrainian leader has banned men aged 18 to 60 from leaving the country. The military has already seen a groundswell of support as civilians rush to defend their country. Both Russia and Ukraine claim to have inflicted heavy losses on the other, with reports of hundreds of soldiers from both sides dying. They included 13 Ukrainian troops who fell victim to a Russian bombardment while defending a tiny island in the Black Sea. A defiant Zelensky said his country would keep on fighting until Russia ends its incursion. The United States has spearheaded Western sanctions against Russia. The invasion of Ukraine sparked a tsunami of anti-war protests across the world, but China refrained from condemning its ally. Hundreds of people took to the streets across Russia to protest against their leader's decision to go to war with Ukraine. From the capital, Moscow, to St. Petersburg, where President Vladimir Putin was born, Russians demanded an end to the hostilities. Riot police swung into action to break up the crowds chanting anti-war slogans and arrested dozens. Solidarity with Ukraine was echoed around the world, with people wrapped in Ukrainian flags rallying in countries including Lithuania, France, Hungary and the United States. U.S. President Joe Biden sent 7,000 troops to Germany to bolster NATO's eastern flank. He also unveiled sanctions aimed at cutting Russia from the global economy. We've now sanctioned Russian banks that together hold around $1 trillion in assets. We're also blocking four more major banks. That means every asset they have in America will be frozen. But the U.S. fell short of evicting Moscow from the SWIFT financial system, despite Ukraine's pleas for a devastating response. Washington refrained from penalizing Russia's crucial energy sector as oil and gas prices skyrocketed globally and U.S. inflation worsened. The European Union also did not ban Russia's gas exports and instead took aim at its financial and technology sectors. 
We are now targeting 70% of the Russian banking market, but also key state-owned companies, including the field of defense. And these sanctions will increase Russia's borrowing costs, raise inflation, and gradually erode Russia's industrial base. Other countries, including Japan, banned exports to Russia's military. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the penalties were not tough enough. He slammed what he called the world's most powerful forces for standing aside, while Ukrainians were being killed. Russia has banned British planes from its airspace in its first response to Western sanctions. This came as President Vladimir Putin brushed aside global denunciations of his decision to invade Ukraine. Putin told business tycoons that the attack was necessary to defend Russia's interests. The man who ruled the country for 22 years said he had no choice and accused the West of using Kiev to threaten Moscow. French President Emmanuel Macron, who is the first Western leader to call Putin since the invasion, asked him to stop the operation and offered to broker a ceasefire. Macron described their conversation as frank, direct and quick, but without much progress. Ukrainians in Hong Kong are hoping to send supplies of food and other necessities to their homeland. In Ukraine itself, a Hong Kong photographer hopes that his pictures will let the world know more about the crisis. Koli Feng reports. Hong Kong photographer Keru Eng, who arrived in Kyiv last Friday, says he's determined to stay in the Ukrainian capital. I'm not leaving just because of a few bombs. So, so I will, I will try and keep myself alive and uh, keep myself able to make some good pictures before I may eventually have to evacuate because of safety reasons. The 35-year-old freelancer says he has not had a chance to sleep since Russia launched the incursion. It is very, very, very shocking to see a direct attack on a capital of 2 million people. It is very, very saddening. For as a Hong Kong, I would like to like help them put their voice out to the general world. I think this is what we can do for them. Ong said he was amazed by the courage of the Ukrainians. Even if there's like uh, 100,000 uh, Russian troops at their border, so they were surprisingly calm. The photographer had to scrap plans to go to the southeastern port city of Mariupol when Russian shelling escalated. He will see how the situation develops before deciding on his next move. In Hong Kong, the city's handful of Ukrainians are anxiously monitoring events in their homeland. Victoria, who has been living here for over 25 years, said aside from personal concerns, she's worried about inaccurate reports and propaganda on the Internet. Like her compatriots in the city, she'll be sending money and supplies to her hometown. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. On to COVID news. Hong Kong's COVID caseload has breached the 10,000 mark for the first time, with dozens more deaths reported today. Health officials ask people not to use emergency services if they have little or no symptoms. When the Wong reports. 10,006. That's the number of new local COVID cases as the city reached five figures for the first time since the pandemic. With nearly 22,000 reported cases as well, the current fifth wave is still going strong. Health officials also announced today that over 50 people are in critical condition, while the virus killed 47 others in the past 24 hours. That number includes a nine-year-old boy whose death was announced yesterday. The oldest fatality was 100 years old. Elderly residents continued to account for most of the dead, although the latest grim statistics include several people under the age of 65. One was 48 years old, two were in their 50s, and another was 64. All of them had chronic health issues, with one also having a history of drug abuse. There were 12 belatedly reported deaths. Officials today appealed to Hong Kongers to refrain from calling emergency services unless absolutely necessary. 
According to hospital authority chief manager Lau Ka Hin, medical staff currently have their hands full with elderly and severely sick patients who have flooded various emergency rooms across the city. He said over 30 percent of ambulance calls yesterday were from people who had little or no COVID symptoms. Lau asked them to recuperate at home instead, since they will not be admitted to hospital during this period. Winawang, HKIBC. The government is discussing with the mainland to bring skilled personnel to the city to help restore Hong Kong's dwindling meat supply. This comes after services at the Shangshui slaughterhouse were suspended because of a COVID outbreak. The abattoir will stop slaughtering livestock from midnight and will not be able to supply fresh pork, beef and lamb. The suspension was ordered after over 100 people working there tested positive for COVID. The abattoir had to be closed for disinfection last Friday and has been operating at limited capacity since then. Financial Secretary Pa Chen says giving out $10,000 in electronic vouchers instead of cash is the fastest way to relieve the COVID-induced financial burden. The final decision to pick consumption voucher is that, you know, currently under the attack of this wave of COVID, mm. uh, many uh, people in Hong Kong, particularly uh, those in the uh, lower income groups, uh, have been heavily affected. So we want to provide certain relief as quickly as possible. Uh, that's why we want to start paying it out in April. Uh, last year, about 6.3 million people have registered and this data with us. So using the same data set to, to give another round of voucher would be the fastest. During an appearance on an RTHK show, Chen was asked why unvaccinated people will also get the handout. He said most of those who did not receive jabs are elderly and hence in most need of financial assistance. And coming up after the break. Hong Kong's newest mobile cabin hospital for COVID patients is just days away from opening its doors.